Sanders. What kind of scouting report could you give us on the true freshman? Well, you know, he's a young guy that is a dynamic player. He's got excellent ball skills. I think you'll see his uh, athleticism and his quickness and his ability to get separation off the dribble. And, and he shoots the three really well, as you saw against Illinois. Uh, and the play, of course, he made in overtime uh, to tie the game was just ridiculous. So I think you can see that um, his uh, competitiveness come out, too. I mean, he, those guys are dying for a win. Uh, you know, uh, I think everybody grows and develops and gets better as the year goes on. So uh, I would expect him to be better. And, and certainly as, uh, you know, I think the second time around, you know what to expect as you go through the league a little more too. So you quit thinking so much and just start doing. And I, I believe that he's that he's uh, more comfortable and just playing more aggressively. Put yourself in Eddie Jordan's shoes. Your team's coming off I've been there. <laughs> Colorado State. Yeah. Yeah, you're coming off that. You know, long game, extended game that could wear on you. Is that? Do you look at that as a head coach? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm sure he managed that yesterday. But these kids are young and vibrant. Uh, I don't believe that uh, we're going to see a whole bunch of. Um, I don't believe we'll see any, quote unquote, yeah, residual from that hangover, whatever you want to call it. I think they'll bounce back and, and be fine. Um, what you do in those, you know, I, I went 0-16 in the Mountain West my first year, and Steve Fisher called me to congratulate me on breaking his record because he was at San Diego State uh, when they went 0-14. And I said, yeah, but we're still, tie, we're still tied in losing percentage. We're still at zero. You know, I mean, winning percentage, what are, you can't call it that, can you? But, um, and so I've been in those positions, and all you worry about is getting your players better, you know, keeping their morale up finding a way to win each game, and we were able to win in the conference tournament. Uh, and so that was really great for our guys to at least have something at the end of the year to build on. And, and um, the next year we won four league games, and, and then all of a sudden we were pretty solid in the league, but it took a while. How tough is it to beat a team twice, even though you, you were able to kind of control I, the game? Obviously, getting the guys' attention because of the, I think, the way the game went. You know, it was 20 at halftime or whatever and got to, you know, a larger sum. And the Rutgers, you know, we're not that good and Rutgers is, is not that bad. So uh, uh, I don't think that's a relevant, um, you know, we, we kind of ignore that that game happened with them. And all we have to worry about is finding a way to win at home. You know, this, we've, we've had some really difficult games. Lost four of them in the league at home. And that's not good enough. We need to be a better home team, and, and we've got to figure that out now. Is, uh, we talked about their freshmen. How do you feel like your freshmen are hanging in there amidst this Big Ten you know, grind? I think they're doing all right. I think uh, you see some of them, you know, uh, uh, Jack McVay probably hasn't had his best games recently. His rebound, you know, and you see it in little things like his rebounding's falling off. Um, Making shots, not making shots, I don't necessarily always judge that. I, I'd rather look at the decision you make on whether it's a good shot or not. But, for instance, you know how Jack looked off a shot the other night. We ran an action out of a timeout that actually was going to get him a three in the second half. He's, and he's really – yeah, I don't want to say wide open because that makes it sound – but he's open. He's open enough to make the shot and shoot the shot, and he's made those before. And he just looked it off and just dribbled out. And we end up – you know, here everybody runs this action for Jack to shoot, and he – out of a timeout, and he won't even do it. That tells me that, you know, I need to get to Jack, and we need to restore some of that uh, um, confidence and, and, and those things. So that's just an example uh, on one guy. Jacobson re responded really well, I thought, to the Purdue game. Is that – Yeah, I think that he responded to a film, uh, which didn't look pretty. And uh, that tells you Mike's got more competitiveness than maybe uh, his pretty face shows. Go. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say with Glenn, uh, you know, he didn't play the last four minutes or so of that uh, Maryland game. And you said that was because of defensive breakdowns and turnovers. Was that? Well, yeah, I think I, I wasn't turnovers as much as um, cat what I said was catastrophic errors, um, I believe. And that's what I meant to say in my mind anyway. I could have said anything. So it was right after the game. Um, but, uh, and, and, you know, he just – Hopped a couple wrong ways, like instead of forcing Melo into a ball screen, um, 
you know, and they twist it late. He kind of made some mistakes, and Melo just got right down the line, right? And that was some; those were the errors I was talking about. It's more; de- it's all defensive errors, and a couple shot selection deals too. You know, he wasn't strong at the rim. I think he was. Uh, their length bothered him. Like I think Siobhan had told me um, in film, like these guys are way longer than Purdue. You know, I think that was their feeling, and you know, so anytime you'd say that when you have thirteen shots blocked too or you know I, but they are they're long at three four and five how do you feel generally about glenn though i think he's had i love glenn i think that you know he's going to have peaks and valleys uh especially as a starting true freshman uh you know all of those guys uh are going to have um like i say tough times and rough times and you know we we played if, if you i don't know how many losses we have i think 11 and i think nine of them are inside of the top 40 in the country, you know. Uh, so the competition also is an adjustment too. So I, th- I think he's making a good acclimation. I think he's learning on the fly, and that's what we recruited him to do. Coach, you talked about the competition that you guys have played. Nine are in the top 40, and then even in the last four games, three of the four have been in the top 13. Um, what have you learned from your team specifically in this stretch? One is keep recruiting. Right, we need we need more size. We know that, and uh, and and just more everything. Right, we've got good guys. We just got to keep going. Uh, if you want to be elite, you know, and that's the goal here, right? So, um, but two is I think we can play with these people. I think our guys know that our our game plan, our style play, is, uh, can give us a chance to win. And you know, if we just play. Uh, fast break basketball, primary fast break basketball, the old three on two, two on one drill that you do in seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. If we just do that well, right, instead of well below average, we win that game. Um, you guys have done well protecting the ball too, even with that faster pace play. What do you have to say about your team's ability to protect the ball this year? They're tired of running on the treadmill at practice. <laughs> you know, that's what you do if you turn it over. So uh, I told Glenn he was going to weigh 98 pounds, or maybe I said 85. I don't know. It was some uh, rude comment. And uh, and so I uh, he was practicing really well on the day before uh, Maryland. I'm like, Glenn, man, you're a totally different guy today. He goes, I'm not running on that treadmill. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, you know, hopefully they're getting the point. Yeah, I, there's no moral victory. It's uh, it's just disappointing to lose, you know, and to know that it doesn't take that much to overcome, and especially when it was probably primarily decisions, you know. A couple schematically things that I think on a, that maybe I made a mistake on, I thought we could cover. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, I talked to the guys, if we double down with Benny, can we rotate quick enough to get to Mello? Everybody, yep, yep, and uh, we didn't. You know, and so that was a disappointing. And then just a couple of balls fall out of our hands right to them, stuff like that. Um, and uh, the fact we didn't trust what we could do, you know. One time in the first half, we doubled, tie rotated, and then for whatever reason, uh, uh, the guy he rotated to, which was Nickens, uh, passed across to Mel. He ran back, and we had two guys guarding the ball. All of a sudden, they throw it right back. He gets a three. Like you're standing there next to your man. You've rotated. Now that's your guy. Just to you know have the the gap mentally right there. Uh, you know, cost us three points. There's so many just little errors that we could have eliminated. And I think every team could say that. Maryland don't say the same thing. Oh, if we didn't do, turn it over this many, you know. So we can go back and forth on that all day. Bottom line, we didn't play well enough to win. Message over the past few weeks has been that four-game stretch and the challenging competition you would face. Now that you're out of that uh, two weeks, what's the well, message? Well, like I said, I, I, the goal, you know, you didn't think you were going to get all four. You know, you'd hoped you'd go two and two. Uh, you couldn't go 0 and 4. Well, we went 1 and 3, which now makes that next segment of games, you know, the biggest segment of games, right? Which is uh, our home game against Rutgers. We need to get a W at home, feel good about that. And we got to go, go on the road and play, you know, a team that's won five in, the, five in a row in Wisconsin's played really well. And uh, I thought controlled the whole game last night against Ohio State. Um, and we have another home game, and I'm not even sure we play, but that game's really important too. So, um, you know, I, I think that. Uh, what you learn as a head coach, especially in the Big Ten, is you live hour by hour, you know. And uh, uh, my dad will call me and say, hey, this guy's hurt for Ohio State. And I'm like, uh, I don't think we play them for a couple weeks, uh, so I really don't care. <laughs> Tell me a day before. So, uh, but, but I think that 
you know, if we can make something happen in this next stretch of games and get on a run that, you know, anything could happen. How do you make sure that the, the disappointment – I mean, the thing about when you – the last three games is uh, against Michigan, their dis- defensive lapses that you felt like – I'm sure they all felt – all the players felt like they could correct. Against Purdue, it was something different. It was more mental toughness, Maryland. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little few, few more defensive lapses, but also just not converting fast break. It's a different thing each time in those three games. So how do you – the guys from not kind of, I don't know. Question, question themselves? themselves. Question themselves. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 well, found, basically there's different ways to lose. Yeah. Yeah. We were just good enough to lose, right, is how we're playing. And, well, what you do is you stick with the process. You stick with the idea of just getting better. If if you worry about, oh, we lost that one this way or lost it. First of all, Purdue beat us. They they just smoked us right in the mouth. And, and, um, uh, and, and. You know, I thought we did enough things to have a chance to get to Michigan, right? Uh, but we didn't. And and then, of course, you know, the tough one the other night. So uh, I, I think what you've learned is, um, one, is that you can – what I'm trying to emphasize is you can compete with anybody. But it's going to take, you know, a full 40 minutes. It's going to take excellent execution, and it's going to take an effort like you wouldn't believe. And I believe we're getting really good effort. But we make mistakes like anybody. Um, and And we haven't come out on top. Uh, but at the same time, I think that we're proving to ourselves that uh, we can be competitive against the best and we can beat the best. You have a Legends weekend coming up. Do you use that to give you guys any juice? Well, I, we talk, we're going to talk about it today, actually. And I think Legends are important. It's something we've instituted when I got here. We've done it in the last three schools. I, I think, A, that, um, you know, I'd like to ask every former player, like, just close your eyes for one second. And imagine you were never a college basketball player. Where would you be? You know, what, how would you feel about life? You know, what, and I, I just like to ask them that question, you know. And it's interesting that way, you know, where, where would you be? And, and because I want them to love being a Husker. I want them to love the experience, and I want to recognize and honor them appropriately. Like we've got a good group coming back, that, uh, the 90-91 team. And um, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, those are good guys, and we want to honor the past successes that, that we've had. Um, and, and so I think inviting people back and getting all that. The hardest part is organizing the database, finding them. There's no real known database, so it's almost like word of mouth. So some guys don't get invited, and we're like, no, no, you're invited. Everybody's invited. <laughs> you know, Don't be insulted if you're not. But, um, uh, and, and getting everybody here, and just that's been the hardest thing over these three years, that you know, four years we've been doing it now. It's just establishing that, that uh, process and that information stream, you know, so – uh, hopefully, uh, I think we've got a solid number coming back. We've got a good, good, good guys coming back, and I think it's important for the guys to get to know them and listen to these guys tell stories of when they played, that they had a crappy coach too. And uh, no, I'm, I'm not saying which coach, right? Um, but, uh, but, you know, just listen to all, all their complaints. It's always good. No, uh, you know, and listen to what it means for, you know, really the most important thing is for what it means to them to have played at Nebraska. You know, that's that's always cool to hear uh, guys like Bo Reed, who's going to speak tonight, talk about. How do, you, how do you get those guys to, I guess, listen? It seems that, you know. Boy, I tell you, kids, I, yeah, kids ask any kids. parent. Right. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, that's the, you got little kids? Oh, well, you wait. All right, brother. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, uh, raise a teenager. Um, no, how do you get them to listen? Uh, the first thing I do is say, listen. And then you hope, um, uh, you know, something that they hear uh, resonates with them. Hey, Coach, the, the Rutgers game last month, do you see that coming at all? No. Yeah, you know, we just – It wasn't like you were playing horrible, but you just lost no. the chance down, down the stretch, and then you come out and beat a team by 30. Yeah, it, it was uh, surprising to me. I was happy it happened, but at the same time, uh, you know, like I told the guys that – that can show us what we're capable of. But, you know, I don't think, like I said earlier, that we were as good as we were that day and they were as bad as they are that day. You talked about Wisconsin winning five straight and they got off to a tough start early in Big, in Big Ten play. Can you learn from a Wisconsin or an Ohio State who struggled early in the year but now are kind of finding their Yeah, players? young teams too, you know, or guys in new positions. Yeah, I think you can use that as an example. You know, it's hard to use league teams because sometimes the guys are like, 
don't tell me how good Wisconsin is. <laughs> you know, I want to beat them. And so, um, but you can use, certainly use them as examples. But usually we just kind of worry about us and what we can do and what we can control. And so um, I think coaches might look at that more than, than the players. Tim, with this being Legend Weekend, is it throwback jersey situation? Yeah, we've got sweet-looking uh, 91s. Have we, are we going to show those off? What are we going to do? Tweet them? We tweeted them already? Nebraska basketball? You don't follow, Kevin? You don't follow Nebraska basketball? You haven't I checked Twitter? I, I follow, but I might have missed it. A little oh. race here. Can you give me your thoughts at least so I know what to expect when I do check them out? They're going to look exactly like they did in 1991, except they're going to be a little fresher. They got the sat- sateen. You don't remember that? <laughs> you know? Big orange basketball. We are ne- I'm never going to wear the short shorts, right? Unless they want to. You know, but they can roll them up. They can like, like see my thing here. I, I fold mine up like that to get them high. You know, you got to get them on the hips. Good. If you're the coach, you got to look a little dorky, right? You got to have that. It's part of the deal. Look at what's his name, Harbaugh. Practice all. We'll find out today. We were off yesterday. We, I mean, I just didn't think there was any emotional way to drag him out and any reason to practice honestly and especially with our second time through on a prep has nothing to do with we've done this on a regular basis too by the way it's not just Rutgers or whatever the second prep often is just a one day prep he was he played three minutes the other night because of his foot he wasn't going to play at all but Hammond got in foul trouble uh, because you know he couldn't practice so you don't quite know the game plan uh, and our screen and roll coverage is a little funkier than than and it was actually I thought decent uh, we got hurt on our post doubles, but Maryland can hurt you a lot of ways. But uh, you played because Jacob was in foul trouble. Anything else for Coach? Are you finding that, Sites? I, I'm looking at I was it. just going to say, <laughs> stick in front of your camera. 